So the, the first question that I wanted to get down <laughs> to is, um, who, who is it that really wants this war between NATO and Vladimir Putin? Because from what I'm seeing outside of CNN and other mainstream media is it seems like it's the, the politicians in Washington, D.C. that are more eager to fight this battle through UK, Ukraine against Putin. And it doesn't seem as if the Pentagon is as on board as the politicians. Who, who's really behind wanting this war? Well, I think it's clear that the American people are largely divorced from the reality of this conflict as they have been for the last 30 years, uh, divorced from all the conflicts. War has always been something that happened far away on somebody else's soil. The difference this time is that uh, Washington has decided, along with help and assistance, particularly from its allies in London and the global financial community run out of New York City, to wage war on the Russian state uh, with the goal of not simply regime change, but ultimately destroying the state, potentially dismembering it. And when you look at the people who are advocates for this terrible, destructive uh, policy, they are largely the same people that, that got us into the Balkans in the 1990s, into Bosnia and Kosovo, and then subsequently uh, were largely supportive of the interventions in 2001 and three for perpetual warfare in the Middle East, demonizing and transforming into an enemy Libya, Syria, and obviously Iran. Uh, it, this is an old story. It's, it's the same old trope that you've been hearing. It's 1936 again. We have another uh, potential Hitlerian state, and if we don't act, uh, we are appeasers, and the, war is, the world as we know it will end. So... Uh, that, that's about it. But I think there's a lot of money behind this because Russia is full of trillions of dollars of resources, mineral resources, oil, gas, precious metals, uh, agricultural. We just go down the list. <clears throat> there was an attempt in the 90s and in the early part of this century by people from the West, many of whom are connected to organizations like Goldman Sachs and the global financial community, to go in and effectively rape Russia and steal everything they possibly could from it. They were ultimately defeated and thrown out by Vladimir Putin, who established a new regime to bring some more stability and dignity back to the Russian state. <clears throat> he has been talking now for many, many years about the uh, unacceptable policy of advancing NATO to Russia's borders. And he's been warning over and over and over again if you do this, you will inevitably come into conflict with us. We will not tolerate a large NATO presence. And when you say NATO presence, read the potential for U.S. ballistic and cruise missiles and so forth on the on the border. And we've taken the position in Washington, that is the political elite, the ruling elite of our country, that Russia is weak, that Russia can be bullied. And all we have to do is apply great pressure and since we dominate the global financial system, we can isolate it. And this ruling political elite embraces most of both parties. And so we are embarked upon this very dangerous course of conflict and confrontation now with the Russian state and its armed forces. The uh, Washington community that sponsors this has obviously enriched itself over the last 30 plus years through all the various interventions and the massive increases in defense spending. But it actually goes beyond that. It goes goes to the reconstruction costs, rebuilding costs, and the introduction of U.S. firms and interests into other countries. It, it's a kind of new imperialism that we've been embarked upon. And Russia is simply the latest target. The problem for the ruling elites in, in Washington is twofold. First of all, most of them are ignorant of reality. They know nothing about the world beyond our borders. They know nothing about military power. And so they badly miscalculated with Russia. This was a war that should have ended in a few weeks because Russia would collapse, or at least in a few months because Russia would collapse. This is a war that should have ended because Russia can't produce enough ammunition. This is a war that should have ended because of horrendous and horrific uh, casualties taken exclusively by the Russians. And all we have to do is arm this proxy this Ukrainian force that we built after 2014, once we had established a government in Kiev that would do our bidding, 
and this force in Ukraine would devastate Russia. Well, it hasn't quite worked out that way, has it? Uh, so now we face a very different set of circumstances. But when you ask who is behind it, you've got to look at a whole range of people. And remember that the preeminent goal in Washington for most politicians is to stay in office and continue to enrich themselves. Therefore, they pay a great deal of attention to their donors. Who are the donors? You have to go and look at the oligarchic a class of people that drive policy, that keep us in a state of perpetual conflict with a whole range of people and nations. Who are they? Then look at the industries in which they are invested and which support these policies. When you when you look at those things carefully, in other words, it, it boils down very simply to follow the money. When you do that, you, you begin to understand that what's happening in Washington has nothing to do with you know, the American people or United States interests. No one in the United States, but very few people in the United States know where Ukraine is. They could care less. And uh, when you ask about NATO, people will say, oh, yeah, sure, that's important, I guess. Uh, what is it? <laughs> you know, I mean, th th this is the problem with just about everything I think that's been happening in the United States since the end of the Second World War. Uh, most Americans aren't terribly interested uh, on what goes on beyond the borders of their own country. I mean, frankly, most of what happens around the world on any given day doesn't make much difference to us. So you've got a ruling class that says, no, 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 we want to be engaged everywhere because it's beneficial. That ruling class is diverse, but again, it, it embraces both sides of the political spectrum. That's why if you're expecting uh, a Republican-controlled House to suddenly dramatically, you know, shift into reverse gear and stop something, you're very much mistaken. Most of them will vote with the left, just as most of the left will vote with them. Why? To keep the money flowing. It benefits them because it benefits their donors. And again, there's no understanding. If you look at this balloon business, if I could, if I could just stop yeah. for a second... We sent an F-22, the most expensive aircraft ever built, out to shoot down a balloon. And the Chinese had told us, well, it's a weather balloon. But, of course, you never believe anything the Chinese say because the Chinese are now enemies and they always lie. But let's look at the facts. The Chinese have 300 satellites, 300 in space. Of that number, almost a third have military applications. The Chinese have their own global positioning system, just like the Russians, just as we do. They have the same capability to monitor what happens from 100,000 feet in space that we do. They can read the names on gravestones. And if they want to monitor the conversations in the White House, they can do it. All right. Why are we worried about this flimsy balloon that is too small to carry a, a significant payload? It can't even communicate with China. It's on the wrong side of the world. The only way it could communicate is to send data to satellites. Meanwhile, our border is open. Thousands of Chinese, thousands of Russians and others from all over the world have been pouring in. Where are they? What are they doing? Are our nuclear power stations secure? What about these people? Are they near any of our military installations? How many of them are agents? How many Chinese scientists and engineers are working in our laboratories? This is all nonsense, what we're hearing about the stupid balloon. They're missing the point. Washington needs to be held accountable for its incalculable negligence and mendacity. I agree with that. But you're not going to get anything out of the balloon. You need to turn to the really substantive issues. Why are our borders open? Why do we have 100,000 troops in Europe, including almost 50,000 in Poland, and none on our borders? There's no threat to Europe from Russia. Russia is not interested in invading Europe. This is all nonsense. This was cooked up for years to try and demonize Putin and turn him again into another Hitler figure. It's the same old trope. It's the same people doing these things over and over and over again. At some point, the American people need to become engaged and put an end to it. That's the easiest way I can put it. Yeah. So uh, <clears throat> do you think this spy balloon is to then embarrass President Biden right before the State of the Union or because, uh, you know, they started saying, oh, well, they came in with Trump, but now we can't prove it. And and, you know, national intelligence didn't ever communicate this to that president. Uh, like, is this just a giant distraction for the American people 
so they don't actually look at what's happening within our own borders or at our borders.